coming up on Bondi Rescue. Can amps on the way down to help you. After pack-up time, and a man is reported missing. So he last went in the water here? But the search goes from bad to worse. Oh, he's dragging the other person under. Go, 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 go. A young surfer is slashed on his Achilles tendon. It's the worst pinch I've ever seen. And a new addition to the rescue team. Where's the major poor timing? Hopes to prove he's a diamond in the rough. Last lost the wedding ring. Bondi. People come from far and wide to play amongst the waves, big and small. But for some beachgoers, the thrill of the surf just isn't enough. Flat Rock. Flat Rock is just disastrous. When the tide is just right, swimmers can slide along the smooth moss on Flat Rock. Oh, sick. But when the tide gets too high, the surges take unwary swimmers past the moss and onto barnacles. A couple little deep cuts on her elbow and her knee. Flat rock strikes again. Two words to describe flat rock, cheese grater. Whoa, that's a good one. For some reason, that appeals to a lot of people, so they go, you know what, let's jump on this cheese grater and roll along it, and then we'll go see the lifeguards. He looks like being attacked by a tiger. You know, most of the cuts we see do come from flat rock. Ugh. But at least 40% also come from serious fin chops. At the south end, a surfer desperately waves for attention on the shoreline. Central to our huts already. Right in backpackers with a bad fin chop. Fin chops are deep cuts caused by fiberglass surfboard fins. see something from a distance and realise how bad it is and not even up close, you know it's, it's time to get the gloves out. Jump in the back lane, so I can pull it on. Oh, it's so bad. And I looked at him and I was like, are you all right? And he, he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I, I think he just didn't realise how serious this cut was and I think I was more worried than him. 17-year-old Joel is unable to see the deep cut in the back of his foot. Is that your own fin? Oh, no, it's from somebody else's. Someone else's? Somebody was, like, dropping down a wave, and, like, I didn't really see him until the last second, so I tried to, like, dive under them, but, like, you know, your foot goes up the back. He's just oblivious to the injury that he had on his foot. Joel may be suffering shock. Lifeguards need him off his foot so they can dress the laceration. Yeah, I think it went through the nerves. Like, I'm actually, like, blood. Okay. Can I pain? A picture is taken for when paramedics arrive. Oh, that's a doozy. It was more for just medical purposes. We could show the paramedics straight away what the cut looked like and how bad it really was. Lifeguards are concerned that Jake may have done permanent damage to his Achilles tendon. Some fin chops are pretty easy, you know. You could probably get them fixed at your local GP, but, um, yeah, look, this, this one's a little bit more serious than that. It's a pretty good cut. Harrison shows paramedics a photo of the now bandaged wound. In any pain at the moment? Uh, no, but like it's, like it's tingling and stuff, but it's like not, no, yeah, no pain. Sure. And no pain right. would happen either. Okay. All right, so we'll run you up to the hospital. You're definitely going to need some suturing. Joel is taken to hospital, where doctors will assess the extent of his injury before surgery. That definitely takes the gold medal for cuts that I've seen around here. Pack up time. Let's go out there. We've actually closed this part of the beach. Lifeguards are rostered on until 7 p.m. These red and yellow flags have come down. Conditions are too dangerous. But in summer, the sun sets closer to 8.30 and swimmers take to the water at their own risk. And we're packing up. We're going home. The hardest thing for us at the end of the day is actually turning your back on the water. We know that when we pack up the beach and we've locked all the equipment away that there are still people swimming. Just as lifeguards are about to close the last door, a report comes in. Central to Bondi lifeguards, just got a report of a male who went for a swim an hour ago. Still got his stuff on the beach. Um, where were you sitting? 
Just here. The man was last seen entering the water. Last location. Uh, middle set of stairs. So we went and had a look through his clothing with her permission and all of his stuff was still here. His money, his phone, his wallet, his keys. So clearly he hadn't left the beach. That's when it became a worry to us that he's still in the water. Is he a good swimmer? Do you know him really well? No, since three days. Three days, OK. So you don't know how well he swims? No, so... OK, all right. And this search started to get a little bit more serious. We're going to get Yatesy to take a sweep along the beach. If someone comes up to you at that time, you can't leave until you've found them. So what I wanted to do was get in the rhino and find this guy. What's his name? Mamet. 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 From Turkey. Mamet. Mamet. Guys, we got a lost man. His name's Mamet. Looking for a man named Mamet. If you're a Mamet, mate, please come to Lost Out Tower. As the search is underway on the shoreline, Singlets and Maxi scan the water praying they haven't missed someone. Maxie and I were sort of looking out the back of the flags and something just wasn't right. <laughs> Maxie and I looked at each other and we were like, is he going under? Yeah, go, go. Right at the back of the old flags, mill set. Is that someone out the back way? Hey, there's a guy going under out the back of the flag. Go, 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 go. Oh, Jack, another first one, though. It's after pack-up time and a swimmer has been missing for over an hour. Looking for a man named Mamet. Then lifeguards spot commotion 150 metres from shore. Hey, is that someone out the back waving? There's a guy going under out the back of the flag. Go, 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 go. A swimmer goes to the man's aid, only for the tables to quickly turn. Oh, he's dragging another person under. Lifeguards are still a long way off. Hey, guys, I've got a board on my car. In moments, there could be two drowned swimmers. I got a call from the tower that there's two guys going under where the flags were, which was right in front of me. And I just pinned it. We just scramble to grab whatever we can. We grab a few boards, me and Singlet's both ran down. You know, I'm got it, I got it. I couldn't see the person, all I heard was going under and drowning. Yeah, I put my head down and just got out there as quick as I could. Have you got eyes on that? How bad is it? We've got him on the binoculars. The bike needs help. Yatesy is backed up quickly by Maxi. I just wanted to go as fast as I can, and at one stage it felt like it was forever to get to the guy. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was like a pulley system. They are both going up and down, up and down. And in that case, it's a perfect example. Sometimes the rescuers do get in trouble as well. Chapo keeps track of the location. Go, okay, boys. If the men go under, lifeguards will use the megaphone to direct Yatesy and Maxi to the last known location. Boys are almost there. We haven't lost sight of him at all. Yatesy's got him. Yeah, yeah. When I got there, they were pretty much holding each other up. I looked over and um, Maxi was coming out, which was good to see. The rescuer was swimming with his girlfriend when he saw the drowning victim in trouble. He has, without doubt, saved a life. The guy that swam over to him, you know, is a hero because he kind of gave us a bit of time to get there so he didn't sink. Not looking for accolades, the mystery man swims back to shore. You know, he put his own life in danger to help this guy and that's probably one of the most selfless things he could do as a human being. AJ is visiting Bondi for the first time. Mammoth, the missing man, is still nowhere to be seen. That guy was pretty lucky. If there was no one else around him, he would have been on the bottom. Lucky that we were still here waiting looking hey, for that other guy. Mate, he's a legend. Um... We weren't still here. That guy would have been dead. Yeah. We're packed up. We've got nothing on the beach. That was a fluke. But I had that buggy with a board on it. And the guy that was holding on to him, he could have been a dead hero, you know? Up at the tower, Chapo thinks he solved the mystery of Mammoth. Oh, yeah, the, the, the bald guy with the grey shorts is back at his tower. Oh, thank you. I haven't got any news on that. <laughs> <laughs> he's back. He's, the, he's back. He's living for me. OK. In the end, Mammoth wasn't missing. He'd just gone for a walk. But ironically, the false alarm he sparked is what kept lifeguards back late and saved another man from drowning.
you know, things like that really play on your mind and you really sort of start to reflect on them and think, you know, everything kind of happens for a reason down here sometimes. At the end of the day, we, we saved this guy's life. We also found Mammoth. There's a good ending. It's good. Early mornings at Bondi. For those that can't make it down themselves, local photographer Eugene Tan helps out. This is how I start my day every day. To come down the beach and take some photos. It's a great way to start the day too. All the people down here are really positive at that time of day. You know, look at it, it's beautiful, beautiful light. Every morning, Eugene uploads photos to the website Aquabumps for people to get their Bondi fix from anywhere in the world. Bondi's a huge part of my life. I'm a mad surfer, I've spent my life in the ocean. If I'm not down here working, I'm down here with my kids. So I'm literally down here a few times a day. A regular fixture on Bondi, Huge can also be another set of eyes for lifeguards on the beach. I guess it's that element of, you just don't know what's going to happen, so I always come back. Mid-afternoon. And rough surf is making it difficult for lifeguards to track swimmers bobbing between waves. Just a reminder, guys, this is not a swimming area. I was patrolling the south corner and it was very strong rips that day, I remember, and the girls ran up to me and, and told me that her brother was in trouble. My, my brother is close there. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Connie just pointed out to the ocean and I couldn't really even see him. Despite the confusion, Yatesy follows the woman. The can is on the way down to help you. Right in the south corner. Yeah, right in the south corner. Lifeguards can see trouble in backpackers' rip, but the situation remains unclear. I went down there with Chapo quickly, and when we got there, Yatesy was in. I'm a central. Queen has just gone into. I actually got out to him quicker than I thought because I was actually at this stage in the rig. A man, the brother of the woman on the beach, clings to a surfboard. He's been rescued by Bondi's resident photographer, Eugene. Well, if Eugene wasn't there, we would have been diving to, to get him. By the time I got to him, we'd been sucked into this bank and it was sucking up sort of over the top of us and that guy was in big trouble. The man is on the verge of losing consciousness. I picked him up and he was just a dead weight. He was just floppy, his legs weren't doing anything. It will be close to impossible for Yatesy to get a dead weight swimmer to shore in the crashing surf. Someone doesn't look that good, eh, Harry? Yatesy, head straight down to south. Yatesy and Quinn race through raging whitewater at the southern end of Bondi. Someone's holding them up out there. Where local photographer Eugene has saved a drowning swimmer. If Eugene wasn't there, we would have been diving to, to get him. The man is grey and weak from a lack of oxygen. Someone doesn't look that good, eh, Harry's? This guy could hardly hold on to Eugene's board, let alone get up on the board. Yates, he gets to a sandbank where he can lift the man onto the board. Was that all it was, him? He's drowning. He looks like he's still drowning. So I've got this guy on the board. He's pretty much a dead weight. You know, as far as I, I could have known, he might have stopped breathing on the way in. He was that bad. Pradeep is on holiday from Nepal barely conscious. He needs immediate medical attention. Come up here. Lifeguard Quinn is a qualified paramedic. You know, I would have been confident with anyone on the sand, but it's just that little bit more when someone like Quinn is there. When you saw his face in the end, he was he looked green. Those eyes, you know, like when you're close to death and your face changes and your eyes change, you know that he was absolutely on his last breath. Did you take on some water just then? 
if his condition deteriorates, then you know you'll definitely need a trip to the hospital. I'm just going to put this on you for, for a little bit, get your breath back. Because of the, the colour, the green in his face, you can tell that he's been without oxygen for a little while. So he's got a deficit there and putting the oxygen on him was just to try and get him breathing properly again and get some uh, circulation back for him. Bit of a tough little episode there. All right, you're in, you're in a lot of trouble there. Local surfers often step in to help lifeguards. Today, Eugene has saved Pradeep's life. When I saw that he was in a real bad way, like his eyes were rolling, he was going under, his head was really low in the water. I could tell he just had no idea how to swim. He looked to me, you know, seconds away from dying. After five minutes of observation... And he said he definitely has taken on a fair bit of water, so... Quinn determines that Pradeep must go to hospital. Did he swallow water? OK. It's the difference between inhaling and swallowing. The swallow goes into your stomach, if you inhale it, you know when you do that, it goes into your lungs. And that's where the problems are. My job is to keep them alive until the ambulance gets there. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good sound when you hear the siren coming down Campbell Parade, you know they're not far away. Here they are now, yeah? Here they're coming now. All right, I'll meet them at... Pradeep remains at risk of further complications. I just want to listen to your breathing. They've put this deficit on his lungs and he's probably heard water in his lungs, which is instant hospital. Uh, he must have been in a bad way for them to take him straight away. We ready to go? The Nepalese guy should buy a lottery ticket. It's very, very lucky. As close as you'll ever want to come to drowning. Bondi attracts over 3 million visitors every year. Everything's fine, yeah. Not every visit goes to plan, which is when lifeguards step in. Guys, just head straight in that way. But sometimes they help out in the most unexpected ways. Wife's lost the wedding ring. Oh, no. Ouch. She's devastated, so... Anyway, we're not going to give up hope until... We've swept the area. Saxon come to the tower and it's one of those man things you have a gut feeling when you know another man's in distress, but we don't really speak about it. You know, generally when a man's in distress, a lady's involved. So I knew I had to help him. Saxon and his wife Paula live in Bondi. Harry's thinks he may have the solution to their problem. Hello. This is Harry's here jewellery rescue from Bondi Rescue. How are you? We need you badly. They've always said it, the diamond's the lady's best friend, and <laughs> there's a reason for that, isn't there? In front of the North Bondi Surf Club, Harry's goes in search of a ring, but the first thing he finds is distraught wife Paula. Paula's becoming quite disturbed, you know, thinking there's, there's no chance in hell now that we're going to find the ring. She's devastated. North Bondi, Harry's is on a very different kind of rescue mission, finding a lost wedding ring. The number one priority is preserving human life, so it's watching people out in the water. But on this occasion, we had a lot of lifeguards on. These guys were my friends. They're VIP guests for me. I'll do anything I can to help them. She's devastated. Hopefully, we can find it and uh, we've got a happy wife. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're not crying that anymore. anymore. <laughs> I wanted to take her mind away from the stress and, and action was occurring. So I used stakeholders, I used all the nipper kids. Yeah, yeah, just dig. Dig. I also gave Saxon a broom to sweep the sand too. Real important. When there's trauma, you give people jobs to take their mind away from the trauma. After an hour of sifting, sweeping and searching, the amateur metal detectors make way for the real thing, jewellery rescue. Hello. How are you going? I'm Paula. Pleased to meet you, Paul. Tiny hey, jewellery Tony, rescue. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, what was it made from? Gold, platinum, silver? It's white gold. All right, we'll have a look and we'll get it back for you. All going well. You know, Tony come down with all his equipment and it, it was pretty much state-of-the-art equipment. Space age, I'm calling it, something from NASA. Off he went and he just did his job just like I do watching the water. Tony uses a high-end metal and plastic detector. 
and quickly has a strike. Oh, you're rich. Oh. 10 10 piece. Bit of a false alarm, but that goes with the territory. We had a false alarm. He's found a coin. You know, I think there might have been a little hope fading for Paula. Tony makes another strike. But this time, Paula isn't getting her hopes up so quickly. Oh, I see it! Mum's ring! Your ring! The joy was just amazing. We were all so happy. And to get that ring back, it was really important. You know, that's 20 years of history between the both of them there being married. And that's so special in the modern day. So they're reunited with the diamond, and it's a great story. Thank you so much. Oh. I knew, didn't I tell you? Have faith in me. Feeling really, really lucky to learn from this. Ladies. Let this be a lesson to us all. The mouth of babes. I'm so happy for my friends to, you know, for them to find the ring because it's made everyone happy. You know, it's not just about rescues and treating blue bottles, it's, it's about helping a friend out here. And we've done that. All is well that ends well. Next time on Bondi Rescue, a surprise visit hey, what's up, Bondi Rescue? gives lifeguards a little more manpower than they can handle. It was a sus moment. <laughs> Help! A local character Help! has a seizure, Help me! which Help takes me! a toll on lifeguards too. I, I'm a wreck. All hands on deck for a mass rescue. I think he's calling you in. But then there's a new problem. Are you putting it? Is that a shark alarm? And Singlets gets uninvited company on the way to a rescue. <laughs>